Hi, welcome to this virtual centrifuge room. Today we will introduce the two delft beam centrifuge and the corresponding assignment to you. The main purpose of the assignment is to get familiar with the centrifuge modeling. We ask you to analyze the data of an experiment performed in the centrifuge. The experiment simulates the behavior of a shallow foundation close to the crest of a slope subjected to vertical loading. The first objective of the assignment is to determine the load settlement behavior of the shallow foundation and to compare this with analytical solutions available from literature. The second objective is to visualize the failure surface under the foundation and to quantify the volumetric and the shear stream fields in the sand which occur during experiment using the particle image velocimetry technique. The second analysis is not compulsory, but intended for the enthusiastic students who want to score an even higher grade for the total assignment. Some benefits of small-scale physical modeling, such as centrifuge testing, are that it's cheaper and faster compared to full-scale testing. Forces are lower compared to full-scale testing. It is possible to control the test conditions to a large extent which is particularly useful for parametric studies. Tests can be repeated more easily. However, you all know that soil behavior like shear strength, dye latency, and stiffness is strongly stress dependent. By scaling the geometry of a field situation, the soil stress will be scaled as well. And therefore, the soil behavior won't be representative for the field situation. To overcome this issue, small scale tests can be run in a centrifuge in order to artificially increase the gravitational acceleration and hence the soil stress. In order to get similar stress levels, one should increase the gravitational acceleration by the geometrical scaling factor n. Let's have a closer look at the two delft centrifuge. First of all, it's a beam centrifuge as opposed to a drum centrifuge. Some characteristics of the centrifuge are distance between platform and rotation axis during spinning is about 1.22 meters. The sample carrier will rotate around a hinge at the end of the beam to almost 90 degrees during the test. Maximum acceleration is 300 g. Maximum payload at 300 g is 40 kilograms. Both platforms can carry models and actuators up to a height of 40 cm. The width of the platform is 24 cm and its length is 38 cm. The centrifuge is powered by an electric motor. One of the challenges is to transfer signals, power, and data from the fixed world to the rotating part of the centrifuge. In order to overcome this challenge, this facility has slip rings to transfer electricity and data, an onboard computer and data acquisition system. Of course, this is placed as close as possible to the rotation axis to reduce gravitational force during spinning. Wireless router to transfer data to the control room. Further, it's good to mention that the balancing of the centrifuge must be always guaranteed this must be done by putting the counterweights on the second platform. The centrifuge is also equipped with in-flight sand pluviator, a two-dimensional loading frame, in-flight shelving apparatus, pile driving hammer, suction case and installer, earthquake actuator, and high-speed high-resolution cameras. Let's now continue with the experiment which you are going to analyze. This experiment is about the loading of a shallow foundation close to the crest of a slope. For this experiment, a soil model has been prepared by raining dry sand in the main model container of the centrifuge, which is also called a strong box. During raining the sand, the falling height of the particles is kept constant to generate a homogeneous sand model, which helps to understand and compare the test results. After reaching the target height, the sand model has been trimmed to create a slope and a crest. It means that the excess sand is gently removed. After trimming, the height of the soil model has been mirrored at multiple locations and the total weight has been determined in order to know the mean unit weight and the relative density. Now, the soil container has been placed on the centrifuge platform and you can see an overview of the test setup. 
The soil container has transparent side wall and a camera is placed in front of this wall. A special frame is attached to the platform to carry the camera and the lighting system. The camera should be at enough distance from the container to capture the test, and the lighting should be stable for the image analysis. The actuator has been mounted on the platform and will be used to vertically load on the foundation. The foundation is attached to the actuator and will be loaded by vertical displacement. Therefore, we can say that this foundation is tested under displacement controlled condition. The displacement rate of the foundation is kept constant during the test. A load cell is placed in between the foundation and the actuator to mirror the total load acting on the footing. The width of the foundation is slightly smaller than the width of the container to prevent from sidewall friction. The test will be performed at 30 G. After connecting all sensors, securing all parts, and making sure there is nothing on the floor, on the beams, or around the centrifuge, the centrifuge can be started and will start spinning slowly, like in this video. One person may perform a final check and then everyone has to leave the centrifuge room for safety concern. The room will be locked and a sign outside warns people that the centrifuge is running. Two cameras are installed to keep an eye on the spinning centrifuge and on the entrance of the room. The researchers and the centrifuge operator must go upstairs and enter the centrifuge control room to control the centrifuge and run the test. The MPS3 software can be used to increase the angular velocity of centrifuge to the target value and to control the actuator. Besides that, the software is also used to lock the data as a function of time and can be used to visualize the data during the experiment itself. The data logged during the test include vertical displacement of the foundation, the vertical load force, and angular velocity of the centrifuge. After reaching the target angular velocity, we can start performing the test by displacing the foundation downwards. However, first we have to make sure that the camera starts capturing images at the right frequency. Now let's see what happens to the foundation during the test. After the experiment, there are a few questions that you need to answer in your report. Determine the unit weight of the sample. Compare the bearing capacity of the footing measured during the centrifuge test and the one that you predicted. Explain the reasons for potential difference. Draw the load displacement curve and discuss if you expected such behavior. Determine the vectors of movements and the shear bands at least for five different foundation segments using PIV and compare the shape of the failure surface to your analytical one. This video wraps up the content in shallow foundation centrifuge test. Make sure to watch the other instruction videos as well to have a more comprehensive understanding. On behalf of the section of geoengineering at Delft University of Technology, we thank you for paying attention to this video. We wish you good luck with your studies.